Wait, are you in the studio? Is this or is this your jam room? Is this your uh this is just my home studio, yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. You gotta have yeah. you go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Been a little while, man. I think last time was uh the last album since we spoke. Yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty, I think. maybe the start or if not late twenty nineteen. That's right. Which is feels like it was only last year. But Yeah. It's good. It's good. As I said, man, it's good to t- talk to you again because, uh, man, this new Solosis album, A Sign of Things to Come, is just fucking awesome. Like, Thank I you. really, really dig this album, man. Like, and, it, you know, it's got that perfect blend of, of heavy as fuck and the melody as well. But I, I, I did see that you said that it's a milestone and feels like a, a debut in some way. Is that, what, what do you mean by that? Sorry, dude. Uh, it just feels like we're like a new invigoration, like sort of energy put into the band, like a new, yeah, th- th- weirdly that this is like the closest we've sounded to how we would have sounded when we started. But cause we were a band for like four years before we ever like released any music. And at the very start of that, we were like closer to how we sound now. And like I'm I've been kind of like revisiting a lot of not necessarily like just it's definitely not like a throwback record, but kind of trying to put myself in that mindset of like when you first have a band practice and you first like play with a drummer and turn your amps up loud, or the first time you hear like a super heavy record and you're only just discovering heavy music and that like excitement and that energy. Um, I'm still proud of everything we've done, but I feel like we kind of lost a bit of that over the years. Like the better I get at guitar and writing songs, you know, just sit in front of the computer and just write stuff. Whereas without really like just kind of feeling it and just like that sort of primal kind of energy, I wanted to like put that back into the music. And uh, yeah, and, and I think kind of get out of my own way because uh before we went on hiatus before cycle of suffering like i may have spoken to you about this last time that i i put too many like restrictions on the band like mm. we played an e standard we didn't do anything that resembled a breakdown because we didn't want to be lumped in with the metalcore stuff uh even if like you know pantera had breakdowns like if pantera came out today people would just call it metalcore because like <laughs> choggy and stuff um so yeah kind of just like stripping that all away and just not caring what anyone thinks about us or what, how people want to label it and just like doing music that like feels like just exactly what we want to do so uh yeah it feels like the record that we wish we could have made when we were like 15 you know i think it's it's one of those albums where like i i, I man i love all, all the stuff you've you've brought out but I think this is such a strong album that you could take it and give it to a kid and be like, you know what I mean? That first one, that first taste, it'd be a really good album to be like, here's your starter, work your way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, not that it's like like my favorite Metallica record and Justice for All, like stylistically, I just love it. But we wanted to do like, our version of the black album so like we wanted every song to count like every song needs to feel like a i don't want to say like a single but like anthemic and uh even like loads of the stuff that excited me as a kid was like slipknot like iowa when that came out and like people equal shit is like an anthem it's not a single you're not going to hear it on the radio but it like we wanted to inject some more of that anthemic feel into our music and like quite a classic record and or like the Great Southern Trank, it was like super heavy, super pissed off, but it's still got hooks. It's still like really catchy. And like, I think I was always like just focusing on the riffs and I didn't want to like dumb down what we do. And I don't think we have, but I think I was a bit too like worried about people thinking, you know, oh, if we do something that's like anthemic, but realistically, that's all the stuff that I love and grew up listening to. So like, why wouldn't we do that? So yeah, and and I've got to say the solo in Thorns, I think yeah. it is, is one of my favorites, dude. Like I, oh, thanks, man. People, guitarists, it's a guitar thing. Like, <laughs> like guitarists can whittle, they can 
shred and they can wank all over the place, but it's to get that melody and really convey that emotion through that solo. It's not something that I, I hear a lot these days. You know, back in the day, man, you'd hear Metallica and stuff, and you could feel those solos. You can sing those solos, you know? Yeah, yeah. That solo in that song got me really fucking good when I was driving and I first heard it. I was like, whoa, man. Oh, cool. It's it's one of my favorite moments of the album. I think people are going to lose Thank you. shit when they hear that live, if you do do it live. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Man, man, is it? Did it come? Did it flow naturally when you were the like, solo? Yeah, def- yeah. That that one in particular, I think that's like one of those ones where, I mean, to be honest, the way I write most of the solos is I just improvise a few times, and then if something stands out that I just stumble upon, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll I'll do that, and then work from there, and then to like work way through it. But that one, because it's so simple, it probably just like a few a few goes at least in terms of writing it like when i write solos it's more like improvise and then i might go back and redo the whole thing and like learn what i did um yeah i mean i i I remember having like a moment on our first ep where i'd written all these really like i just written all these solos and i was like this lick and then this lick and uh I was some i was struggling with one of them and i was just like why don't i just ignore that and just do something like just feel and i yeah i i feel like i've got uh like a sense of i I want my solos to feel like vocal and like expressive and like the melody to like mean something and not just be like i don't know boring or generic look man i i do like a good like bendy solo with like all the tapping and all that shit but there's there is something about those emotive solos that get you you know, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite ones is the James Hetfield solo, the one in uh, "To Live Is to Die" yeah. and "Justice for All," and it's just like super, just melodic and simple. But it's, yeah, sick. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. I did uh, see that you got the snake tattooed as well. Yes, yeah. To signify this album cycle on your back. Yeah, that, man, it's it's a brutal place to get tattooed. Oh yeah, yeah. I I really wish I I actually bought some numbing cream, but because it was like a three hour train away, I couldn't use it. So it was it was a painful one. I've never used I've only got a few tattoos. I've never actually used numbing cream yet, but the guy doing it was like, Well, it's for the best because your skin's better when it's not all numb and shit. But uh yeah, I I it's a big moment uh for me in my career and it's like I've never work this hard on any record before and it feels like it feels like a big moment for us um so yeah i was just like right i'm gonna get that on my back so sick dude especially i mean the artwork when i first saw it i i thought it was kind of from a distance kind of in the shape of like maybe an apple in a way and then you look right. at it, it's like they got the snake is that some kind of symbolism that ties in with the lyrics. You know, I know there's some sort of maybe religious themes going on, or maybe I'm looking into it too much. <laughs> like, uh, You're the first person to say they saw an apple, but it that's kind of cool. Uh, like, you know, the, the snake and the apple, that makes sense. Yeah. Like- um, the s- snake in general is kind of, um, I guess in a lot of like ancient civilizations would signify like change or coming change. Hmm. Or, or like in ancient Egypt, it was like a sign of rebirth. Um, so the the album title, the title track, is not specifically about you know rebirth or the band or anything, but it does also kind of feel like a new chapter for the band and stuff. And cycle of suffering was a little bit different, and this one's just like a more of a confident step to like do something a bit different. I mean, we. At the same time, I, I'm still proud of everything we've done. I don't think we're going to like get further away from where we've been, but I think we can confidently go in any other direction. But we're always going to have one foot in like the thrash thing and what we've done. I mean, that's a, that's something else. You know, you, you've said is is that you know you, you seem to get heavy as you get a get older. I guess you've stayed heavy. Where me, 
like I've you know I get heavier the way I, you know the more I get old. That's not just me, my fat ass. That's actually my taste in music. I get heavier as I go. But is that for you? Like you find that you like you're craving more aggression, more. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it's something that was what enticed me about heavy music in the first place and what excited me. I I remember I was already into like some like heavy and alternative music like Rage Against the Machine and and stuff. But I remember buying a sing a corn single for the song Good God, which is a song of Life Is Peachy, and it's like. It was so so much heavier than I expected. I just bought it because I just saw what they looked like. I was like, oh, they're kind of cool. I was like a skater kid, so they weren't like too overtly like metal looking at the time for me. And uh, I, it was so much. It was more than I had hoped for. I was like, this is so heavy. I love it. And then like, they then put out uh, Follow the Leader, which I was kind of like, oh, this is a bit more like tame and polished and commercial sounding. Okay. And then Slipknot came out, and I was like, oh, "Okay, this is this is my shit. I love this." And Slipknot, we're talking about bands like Cannibal Corpse and Morbid Angel, so I started getting into ext- extreme music. But when Iowa came out, like as a fan, that was the coolest feeling. Like a band when, when you see all these other bands get big, and like Slipknot blew up. They were like one of the biggest bands on the first record. I saw them above Rage Against the Machine in Reading Festival here in the UK on the first album cycle. So you could, you know, they're talking about getting heavier and you're like, yeah, well, I see it when I believe it because every other band just goes more commercial. And when they did it, I was just, as a fan, just so, like, grateful and felt, like, respected. And uh, that's, like, that's exactly what I wanted from them. And bands getting heavier was something that I just always thought was the coolest thing. And you look at, like, Pantera, like far beyond driven's heavy in the vulgar display of power and great southern trinkles even heavier than that and like it's probably why they were doing like arenas in the 90s because like people were like that's exactly why we like you because you're fucking heavy so uh that's my whole philosophy like i look to particularly slipknot and pantera and like well, at least first album to iowa for slipknot and like pantera just getting heavier and more extreme was like the coolest thing to me as a kid and i still I still have that mindset and I'm not necessarily saying like I can't vouch that we're always going to be heavier than ever but that's always going to be there in our music like I, I just love heavy music and I you know death metal was a big part of my musical upbringing and, and stuff and I, death metal and thrash was like the first two subgenres that I really like honed in on so like if I was to do a quiz on like nineties death metal, I think I'd do pretty well. That's like really bread and butter. And if yeah. you come down here, let's do it. We'll do a okay. We'll prep it, and I'll just we'll we'll go hard. We'll go deep into the question. Okay. And then okay. A big test, <laughs> and then you'll probably okay. kick my ass. But I, we'll see. And Tara, there is a, another moment on the album as well, like vocally, man. It like you. It, it sounds incredible, like you, the range and everything. But uh, what's that that line? Uh, it's like you do this this in Selmo type. Well, that's a fucking shame. Oh yeah, in, in a sign of things to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Like everything. That like- was that was a weird one. That was not one well, not a weird one, but I was the way I kind of sometimes the way I approach writing is just to vocals is to just like press record and just like hum melodies and sometimes just random words will come out just as I'm trying to feel out a vocal melody. And I'd I'd already written the lyrics for the like quiet part where I'm singing. And I didn't know like how I was going to transition. And that literally just came out of nowhere. Like I literally just pressed record and I just said it. I was like, Oh, can I get away with that? And then like just kept it. (laughs) So good. That live is going to be cool. Or have you played it live? Have people? No, we haven't. I can't wait to play that song live. It's, it's, uh, I feel like, particularly when it's like, you know, our own show and people know the songs, that that one's going to be a big one for us. I think so too. That line here in a whole fucking crowd, like saying that, like, that's, that's going to be really cool, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Real. Of course, I mean, I do have to ask you, I know you're probably sick of getting the question, but, um, opening for Metallica, dude, I mean, I know you're a bait. Area thrash dude, lover. Yep. Oh man, 
what was it like playing that that stage, man? It would have been tricky being in that configuration. Oh yeah, it's that like obviously they've done that since like the nineties, playing in the middle, and we we knew that going in that they were having a stage in the middle. But that particular one on this new tour is the biggest they've ever had it. Like it's the the biggest uh, circular stage they've ever done themselves. And uh, yeah, it's weird because they've got the snake pit in the middle with like the VIP fans, and then you've got people behind you. So no matter where you are, people you've got your back to someone, which feels weird. Like who who should I have my back to right now? We'd all like you know try and walk around the stage, but we we'd all have our own area where I've got my microphone for backing vocals, my guitar tuner, my water. And I'd be like halfway around the stage and go, oh shit, I need to get back to my mic so I can sing the next like backup line. And I, the amount of times I missed my vocals because I was too far away. Yeah. But it was very cool. And we got to meet them a bit and they were super friendly and humble and yeah, dream come true. I mean, do you, do you play with monitors or, or just in ears these days? Are you just... In ears, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh man, I, I have to do it personally. I have to do a little bit of a blend of both. I, I haven't done the full <laughs> leap yet. So I could yeah. like not having that and just like that would have been a challenge. You know? Yeah, I don't know how it would sound without in ears. I mean, I, I assume they must have yeah, dude. just been on wedges in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And like, like, at least in like the early 90s on like the Black Album when they started doing it. And I, I can't imagine like PA would be. F- facing them as well but yeah yeah it's all yeah yeah man yeah unreal dude and of course uh you know are there plans for australia you're probably getting asked that a lot too there are yeah i can't i can't divulge any information yet um there's i think there's maybe a couple of options at this moment in time um and we're just waiting to hopefully lock something in but i don't want to i don't want to jinx it or say that it's definitely happening but it looks like the first half of next year Excellent. it's looking like australia could be the second tour we do on this cycle because it's been so, like- yeah Dude. it'll be it'll have been 11 years 2013 Soundwave. Soundwave. i was there and that was oh a- yeah and I, I was that was the first time we spoke was for for that tour oh I- god yeah i mean 11 years now my, i can't remember that much of it <laughs> Except it was, is I just remember it being brutally hot that year. <laughs> it was, fun. oh, yeah, it was insane. Like, I remember Brisbane, the first show we did, like, my van's pretty much melted to the stage. That's where I was, like, yeah, it was that was, yeah, unbearable. Yeah, yeah, you were. <laughs> well, hopefully, you come, you, I mean, it sounds like if it's first art, like summerish or even, uh, hopefully, For you, yeah. Yeah, 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 well, man, you know, we'll. We'll look after you. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. It's one of my favorite places to tour, so I can't wait. And it's going to be a good time, dude. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. But in the meantime, man, September 8th, man, yep. kind of things to come. We'll have all the links down here and on the on the website. Brother, thanks so much for hanging out again. It's good to, good to t- see you. Thanks for having me back. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. No worries. And when you come... Come down. Let's do that that thrash test. Death metal. So I can do thrash as well if you want, but my my nineties death metal is the the better one. Is it okay? Cool, because we'll put it in a big box and I'll get you to. I mean, at least it was like it's not something I've really like done much practicing on in recent years. But like, yeah, if you want to ask me what year, what record came out, and what the lineup was. I'm mostly pretty good with that stuff. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. I'll, get, I'll start training. Start training. Cool. Here. Oh, dude. Hey, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, brother. All the best. Yeah. Have a good one. Take care, man. See you.